All right, so in this video, we're going to look at creating a dynamic dropdown or a select HTML element containing options that come from a database. So I'm basically pulling what you can see here from a database here. So we have two tables, so we're going to be working with MySQL or SQL joins here. And this users table just contains a, an ID, which is an auto increment, and then a username. So that looks like the following. The ID is obviously an integer. It's unsigned. It's a primary key of this table. And we have an auto increment extra on it. Just so when we create records, this increments. We've obviously got a username, which is a var chart of 20. So we've got them fields there to play around with. Now I'm keeping the profile information separate, but I'm, join, uh, I'm sort of joining this via a foreign key. You don't need to set it up this way. We'll do all that within the query. But essentially here we've got an ID, which we can sort of ignore. This isn't really that important, but we've got a first name and a last name. And then we have a user ID that this relates to. So for example, Alex Malcolm is at user ID of three. If we head over to users at ID of three, we have this Alex M, which is that user. So what happens when we select a user and then hit fetch details? Well, what that's going to do is it's going to pull in all of them details. At the moment, this is just uh, print on an array. It, you know, you can do whatever you want with this data when you have finished this video. It's entirely up to you how you use the data. It's it's going to be completely different for most people. But this is basically what we're going to achieve by the end of this video. So it's fairly straightforward to set up. It isn't really that complicated. Let's take a look at the code. All right, so I'm starting out with not much at all. The only thing that I have done is I've created this start file inside of an app directory. And all this is doing is it's instantiating new PDO object. We're using MySQL as our driver because I'm using MySQL. The host is localhost or 127.0.0.1 and the database name is website and then my username and password. And what I'll do is require this in on any, on any pages or files that I want to use this. So let's require that in just to start with because we know that we are going to need a connection to our database. And just a warning, this code is going to be very verbose. It's all going to be on one page. It's not going to be the nicest structure, but uh, you can refactor this into your own project to make sure it's uh, well written and, and uh, not all lumped on one page. Of course, if you are building a very small application, you could get away with this. So the first thing that we want to do then is uh, construct a query or an SQL string, if you like, to pull in all of the information about the users. And then we want to join on that profiles table. So then in your drop down, you can even display things like their first and last name if you really wanted to. So we're going to have a variable here called users query. And this is just going to be a string. So I'm going to pull this down onto multiple lines just so it's a little bit easier to read. And we're going to select something from these tables. The first thing that I want to do is pull users.id and then I want to pull users.username. Now we're explicitly defining the table because we're going to be working with joins. So we want to specify which table this data is coming from. We could of course say users.star with an asterisk to pull in all fields, but it's unlikely that you're going to want to pull in all fields. So the next thing then is to pull in users profile dot first name. So it's just this field from this table. And we're going to do a similar thing for the second name or the last name and do this. Now, where do we want to pull this from? Well, initially, we only want to pull from the users table, but we then want to join on using a left join. We want to join on the users profiles table. And the reason we use a left join is because we know that the user would always exist, but the profile may not exist. It depends on how you set things up. So we need to choose the fields to join on. In this case, it's where the user ID equals the user's profiles dot ID or user ID rather. So this should be enough now to pull in all of the information we need. So let's create a users variable and we'll use our database to query that. So we'll say users query. And from here, we should be able to loop through this to actually display all of the users. So let's end the PHP tag just there so we can write some markup down here. Just a basic document will do. It doesn't really, really matter that much. I'll just give this a title. 
So inside of here then, let's just practice looping through the uh, results from our query. So I'm going to create and open some PHP tags or start and close. And we're going to use a for each loop here. You don't need to do it like this, but it just makes it a little bit easier to inject markup if you do it line by line. So we're going to say users and we're going to fetch all. This is going to give us all of the uh, records it uh, returns or that query returns. And it's going to give that us back as an array so we can use our square brackets to access each field value. So we'll end the for each loop just there. And inside of here, let's just test echoing out. Ah, we should say as user, miss that out. So we're going to echo out user and then we'll access username key from that, which should give us when we refresh a list of the user's names. So we know that we can get them now. That's the first step. The next step is to actually put these into a drop down. So to do this, I'll just start back up here and I'm going to create a form with a post action. In fact, let's change it to get so it's a little bit easier. And um, the action here, oh, sorry, the method is going to be get. The action is going to be listing.php because we're just submitting back to this page. And then inside of here, we want our drop down. So to do that, we have a select with a name of user. So we'll call this user. And then inside of here, we're going to have many options. And the value is going to be the user's ID. And the text within the option element is going to be the user's name. But let's just say choose a user and leave the value empty for this one. Just so here, down here, we can loop through. And at least initially, we see this rather than the first user, for example. So what we can do then is we can actually move this up to here. And let's just indent this. And then in here, we can create our option. So for each of the users that have been returned via this query, we can now output an option. And in here, we can replace making this dynamic. So we can echo out, for example, user username. And then for the value, we can echo out user ID. Beware when you are working with outputting directly from a database, make sure that you are um, escaping with HTML special chars. Uh, just make sure you're being careful about what you're outputting blindly from your database. So now we should have something a little bit different. We've got a drop down with our choose a user option. And then we've got the list of these names here. Now, if we inspect the page and look inside of our developer tools, uh, let's inspect this element, you can see that we actually have Alex, Billy, Alex, M and June, and we've got one, two, three and five, which obviously relate to the IDs in our database table. So we're now ready to submit this. And because we're using a method of get, this is just going to be passed directly from the URL in the query string. So we need a submit button first of all. So let's create a submit button just here. And I'll just say uh, show details it can be anything. So what we can do now is with the submit button in place, we can click on a user, hit show details, and that then appends to the uh, query string in the URL. And now we've got user equals one. We can do the same for like another user and that will just change that value. So now what we want to do is actually fetch the details uh, about each of the user that uh, users that we're selecting. So we up here are going to do an if statement. And this if is going to check if that uh, user key exists in the get super global array. And that sounds a little bit more complicated than it is, but it's just checking if that value exists in the get super global, which is basically what we see up here. And we can access that in PHP using dollar underscore get. So if that does exist, then what we can actually do is we can ex expand on this query to actually go ahead and only pull in this information where the user ID is a specific user. So for example, we would do something like where ID equals one, that would pull in the first user. So we can just append onto this query. In a more complex situation, this wouldn't be ideal to have to do this. But since we're just playing around, we're trying to be as efficient as possible with this example. 
So I'm going to create a new variable called user query. So not users query, but user query. And again, this is going to be a string. And all we're going to do inside of here is we're going to put in the users query. But on the next line, we're going to say where users.id equals. And then we're going to add a placeholder. Because what we're doing here is we're taking a value directly from the URL and placing it into a query. So we need to be careful about SQL injection. So I'm going to create a variable called user and we're going to prepare this statement or prepare this uh, query. So I'm going to pass in user query, which is our string here. And then I'm going to execute it, passing in the replacement for this placeholder. So in this case, it's just user execute. We don't need to assign it to anything. And inside of here is an array. The first key is just going to be the name of the placeholder that we gave here. So in this case, it's user underscore ID. And we'll assign that the value from our global, our get super global array. So let's get user. So now um, we are going to have a selected user. And that's just going to be user fetch. We're only pulling in one record, so we don't need to use fetch all. And we choose how we want to pull it in. In this case, I want an associative array, which will basically mean that the keys or the fields from each of these will be the key of the array. So we can just easily access them. So why don't we just do a var dump on selected user here, just so we can see how that this works. OK, so let's get rid of this in here. And let's choose the user. So I'll choose the first one and hit show details. And as you'd expect, we now have all of the details, including first name and last name, which remember came from that other table. And they're all within one uh, array. We've got four elements here. And we can always go back and update the query if we wanted to pull in more. So I'm not going to var dump there because that's uh, silly. What we are going to do is underneath the form, we're going to, if this selected user is set, we're then going to just do a print R on it. And in this case, what you could do is do anything you want uh, with these with this array. It's easy. You just access the array elements. So if the selected user is set here, and we'll just end that if just there, inside of here, why not let's uh, put this inside some uh, pre-tags, which basically preserve the formatting of something like print R. We don't need to echo this. So we'll echo or I'll print R on selected user. So now we get the following. So if you did want to go ahead and access, say, username, first name or last name, all you need to do is do something like echo selected user and then the name of the field. So in this case, we'll just say last name. So in that case, it would pull in the last name, we choose someone else, it pulls in their name. So that's pretty straightforward. But there's one thing we need to do just to tidy this up a little bit. We know how to do this and we're done. But at the moment, when we have a user selected, the uh, drop down doesn't know where we're at. There's no selected attribute on any of these options to tell us where this should be automatically selected when we reload the page or when we submit the form. So we're going to do a little bit of logic inside of here. So remember, this is where the value attribute starts and this is where the value attribute ends. To select an option within a uh, select element, we just say selected and that will uh, automatically select that element. But what we want to do here is open and close some PHP tags and we want to only output selected if the currently selected user matches the, the user ID within this loop. So this is a bit of a long way to go around it, but if you structure your application in the right way, this will make it a little bit easier. So what we want to do then is we're going to use a ternary operator to do this. So we have a condition here, then we have the first result and then the second result if it's basically an if else. So if this condition is true, then we do hit this or output this. So what we want to do is echo this condition. Now, otherwise, if that's not true, we just do an empty string. In the case of it being true, we want to say selected. And this doesn't really make sense at the moment because we don't have a condition. I've just written condition. But the condition here 
is going to be to check if the user or is if the selected user set. So all we can do here is say is set selected user and the selected user's ID equals the currently looped user. So say for the first record, this will loop. If the user that has been selected, if their ID matches the one in this loop, then we'll just output selected. So what we can do here then is if we select say Alex and hit show details, if we inspect this uh, select element, you can see that the option at value one, because we're doing that check with IDs, we've output selected here. And again, if we do Billy, for example, if we click on Billy, uh, it just changes the selected to Billy. So this is a very basic example of how we can do dynamic drop downs, pulling details from our database. And of course, we've also looked at basic SQL joins.